everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to do not a sewing long but sort of like a tips and tricks video. So I'm going to be showing you how to set in a neckband. So if you want to get into making t-shirts and you think that you know making a neckband for a jersey t-shirt is really difficult then you might find this video quite useful. So I've pretty much got the knack now for setting in neckbands really really easily. Um, so this is just a quick video of how I do it and obviously a lot of patterns do vary but most t-shirt patterns will have a neck band that you stretch to fit in your sort of neck hole um, so this is how I do it so I hope it's very very useful okay so with your t-shirt front and back pieces once you've joined your shoulder seams um, I've used the overlocker on mine um, you should end up with sort of like a half top shape so all you have to do is open it out like so so that the neckline's in the middle now I always mark this bit first before I sew the neckline I don't know why but don't be tempted to do this and mark the middle of the neck and then the middle of the neck at the bottom because it won't be an equal circle you need to do it in four parts so what I do is I join the shoulder seams together and then I put a pin in this fold here that's my first point and then once that's together carefully bring it around if you're using stretch fabric don't be tempted to pull it just let it lie flat and then that's my second point there Now, once you've got the front and the back halfway points, then you open it back out to your t-shirt side, but you bring those two pin points together, and then again, gently put together, and that's the halfway point. And that will give you four equal quarters. Notice how it's like a good inch past the shoulder seam. So that's why we don't use those shoulder seams as our halfway point. Right, so I've got my four points there. So next I just have my neck band here. So I'm just going to join the short sides together really quickly on my overlocker. And then I'll come and show you the next bit. Okay, so once you've sewn your neck band together, it should look something like this. So all you do now is right sides together, fold it in half, not right sides together, wrong sides together, fold it in half like that lengthways all the way around. Now you can give this a press if you want to, but I never bother because I'm lazy. So I am going to put a pin, match those seam lines together with the bits that you joined and pin that. Then fold it in half at that seam line bring these together again carefully fold in half that's my second point there I just need to bring that a bit closer before I do that and then again join those two pins together and then Wherever that ends up folding, that's your third point. And then the last one together like that. Okay, so I have four points on here four points on here so now I will lay my t-shirt out just so that I can see the back of the neck and the front of the neck so at the back of the neck I want that seam on my neck band to be at the back so I'm gonna join these two pins together so all I tend to do is line them up take one out pin it through both and then take the other one out and then you can carry on and join all your four pins together. So note that 
just the raw edges have to be with the raw edges and then the fold, the folded part of the neckband is facing down. So basically all the raw edges are together. And then, this will, is what will happen on most t-shirt patterns, especially if you're using stretch fabric. The actual t-shirt will be small, like slightly bigger than the neckband. So all you need to do is stretch out the back slightly until it sort of lies almost flat. Hold that there in the middle and pin together. So you're just sort of stretching out the centers and then joining them in the middle and that will keep it nice and even when you're sewing because you don't want some bits to be gathered and some bits to not be gathered so a nice even stretch is what you need okay so now I ha should have eight pins instead and then that's ready for sewing so all I'm going to do now is so around the raw edges and you're just going to gently in between you do one pin at a time so start at one pin slowly pull it apart until you get to the next pin stop take that pin out and then pull it slightly to the next pin don't be tempted to just keep stretching all the way around because it will become uneven so you're just going to start sewing at one pin i normally always start at the back of the neck because i just think it that's the bit that i'm least likely to see so i will place that part under my needle take that pin out, stretch this slightly until I sew to this next point, take that pin out, stretch that bit slightly until it's flat and then sew to this point and keep going all the way around like that. Okay, so once you've finished sewing, it should look something like this. And then when you turn it over this way, it should be quite a neat neckband. So you can either press this slightly and then top stitch the seam allowance down underneath, or I normally overlock this edge just so it's neater, and I do overlock it sort of inside that line. Um, and then I just do a really small zigzag over this bit just to keep it nice and flat inside, otherwise it, it can sort of curl up and things like that and it doesn't look that nice. So I'm just going to finish this off but I hope that was useful. A couple of things that I didn't mention was that um, I used a stretch stitch on my machine to sew this bit. I tend to find using my sewing machine a bit easier for sewing the neckband than it is to use my overlocker because I have a bit more room and I don't know I just find it much easier. Um, so I use a stretch stitch and of course because it's stretched fabric I have got a ballpoint needle in my sewing machine. So yeah I hope you find that useful. I just need to finish this neckband off and then it's ready to wear. So I just thought I'd quickly show you what I do to finish it off. So I've overlocked all those the three raw edges together and then on the front side I've just done a really small zigzag. It's a 2mm by 2mm zigzag all the way over. Um, I think I needed to change my needle because it has skipped a few of the zigzag stitches so obviously I've blunted it a little bit. Maybe I've overused that ballpoint um, but that's what my neckline looks like finished. Nice and flat and neat. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up if you found it really useful. If you have any questions about how I did it or any other questions about jersey t-shirts um, then please comment below. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already um, and the t-shirt pattern I'm actually using is the peak t-shirt from Wendy Ward's new book um, A Beginner's Guide to Sewing with Knitted Fabrics. I think it's that's the full title. Um, so this is the Wendy Ward's Peak t-shirt um, that I haven't finished but I am going to be doing another video soon about um, insetting sleeves so hopefully you'll find the next few videos quite useful and then finally I will have a tropical t-shirt finished because I had just enough fabric left over to make one more item out of this amazing jersey. I can't get enough of it. I am wearing a Nico top in a jersey I bought from the Village Haberdashery. Um, so yeah, 
I hope you enjoyed this video. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you next week. Happy handmade, everyone. <laughs>